Thank you very much for the kind introduction. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Um, and my life is easier after the lectures by Dr. Joe and Dr. Lipka. They have introduced a lot uh, the subject. Uh, I would like to just uh, to give you uh, at least uh, two, three ideas about uh, uses of the DNA methylation microarray in mouse. And um, I would like to start with um, that this array is really interrogating this methylated cytosine uh, that precedes the one in, although some of the sites in the mouse array also includes uh, CNG sites. And this is a critical mark that really determines identity of cells, identity of cells and what goes wrong in different diseases among these in cancer. And DNA methylation is a very prevalent mark that now has reached clinical stage in using different biomarkers and being the target of different uh, drugs, um, epigenetic drugs, for example, in, in MDS or in, or in AML. My lab has been uh, doing a lot of uh, work and using a lot. Uh, we were the first lab to validate the, the DNA methylation 450K and the EPIC array in, in humans in a, from a technical, uh, biological manner. And this has been now what they use. As you know, the EPIC array um, and 450K is the official uh, tool used by the Cancer Genome Atlas to obtain profiles of different tumor types. This is, this is great for the humans, but as Dr. Joe has put in his chronology of discovery, uh, the field was demanding a equivalent tool to study in a very cheap, fast, uh, comprehensive manner the mouse DNA methylome. And this is due because a lot of uh, researchers, they are able to induce tumors in mouse um, using different chemical agents or radiation, but we know very little about how to study this DNA methylation in this mouse. Uh, it's very expensive, whole genome by sulfate sequencing. It requires a lot of bioinformatic power and expertise, etc. The same for all the researchers that they have genetically engineered mouse models. They have all these knock-in and knock-out mice models. They have these tumors, but they have problems really studying the epigenome in these samples, because as I said, it is very expensive to uh, do the whole genome by sulfate sequencing and requires a lot of biocomputational power. So this has been in part solved by the introduction of the Infineo mouse methylation bit chip. And this is an array that was designed by Dr. Joe and Dr. Peter Laird. And we were happy to validate, validate the array also in, in our hands, in this independent technical and biological validation of the, of the array. And this was published um, early last year. This array really provides a very comprehensive view of the human DNA methylome including in printing regions, and they have this half 50% methylation of these sites, can provide clues about cancer, includes X chromosome props that can be very important in several neurological disorders. Some of them are tissue-specific sites and can be uh, used to study aging, as mentioned before. And most important, this is a very reliable tool in the sense that it's pretty easy to use, uh, so it's user-friendly and can be added to databases. It has been mentioned before that now there are thousands of data of the human DNA methyloms using the 450K or EPIC data deposited in GEO and other databases. Uh, so it will be nice to have in the future the same for, for this data of, of mouse. So I, I really encourage everyone to deposit uh, the mouse DNA methylom, DNA methylation data using the, uh, the newly developed array. So the, the array itself, um, as you mentioned before, but just looking at this in a little bit different perspective, it has a cover from all uh, chromosomes, including uh, the Y and, and X chromosomes, and also mitochondrial DNA. And it's more, mostly the props there are by Infinium 2 type props, only a minority are Infinium 1. And you look at, at looking at the CBG context, uh, most of them are, we call it open C, but you call these like uh, intergenic regions, the same. Uh, just we use open C by the, by the equivalent C homology with CPG islands and CP, CPG shores and CPG shelf, also coined by Andy Feinberg. So most of these uh, CP, CPG sites and props are in open C, and most of them are also in the body of the genes. Although we have a, a few, this, this percentage here, you can imagine a quarter uh, of this, 25%, 30% of them, 
in the classical regulatory regions, that is system sites around uh, minus 1,500, minus 200 uh, of the transcription star site, a lot of these are in the body. And this is an area that requires a lot of research, because we know very little about the effects of DNA methylation changes in the body of genes. Others are in, in regulatory regions at distance. For example, in, in, in serious regulatory elements, there are some of these probes, some of them are enhancer-like probes, other are promoter-like probes, etc. And some of them are located in, in the DNA hypersensitive site, these regulatory regions. And this can be irrelevant because a lot of changes that are happening in cancer are not only happening at the proximal promoter in the one that is described here, but they are happening elsewhere, at distant regions. These are some biological validation of the power of the array. This is just replicates from the same sample. You see, they're using the same sample twice, obtain this straight line, showing a very good replication in those two cases. This is the comparison between uh, fresh tissues and, and paraffin sections from the same sample, fresh tissue, paraffin section. You see this very good straight line here. And this is extremely relevant because if we want to be uh, to have a successful tool, this has to be, a, be able to be used, sorry, uh, in paraffin sections. Here you see below some of the capacity to detect changes of DNA methylation of the array. So these are uh, three different cell lines, uh, mouse cell lines, that has been treated with inhibitor of DNA methylation, 5 phase cytidine. And you, you see how now there is no straight line. There are all these events going up, showing uh, loss of DNA methylation at different sites. Of course, if you do a knockout, in this case of a DMT, you see this a very massive hypomethylation. Remember, this is a drug, has a weaker effect, and this is a genetic disruption, has a more massive effect. Uh, creating this loss of DNA methylation. These are, uh, are examples of the use of the array. This is just to classify tissues. You can see very well that it has, uh, is able to differentiate different tissue types and re respecting the embry embryological uh, um, traits here is able to separate emb uh, the embryological layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm, all of them. And, and it, within each uh, embryonic um, substrate, it's able to discriminate its particular tissue. You see the same here. This is the heat map. The same you can see by TS, TSNE. You see the same type of clustering by tissue type. So it's very good for the tissue types. And the other thing to remember, if we, if we use all this and put all the samples together, is that mostly there is a bimodal distribution. You have CPG sites fully unmethylated or fully methylated, although some are in the middle, expected, but mostly it's a bimodal distribution of the CPG content in this array. Here, if we study the, the methylation according to, to, to sex um, and to imprinted uh, sites, you can see that you are, this is a very easy way to, dis, to, to distinguish between male and female, mouse, and this it is happening, all of them, in the X chromosome associated CPG props, in the heat map here, and you can see here the discrimination that you can separate using the TS, TSNE here, the same. If you see at the distribution, you will see that in the female, some of those uh, CPG sites located in the X chromosome, they have the 50% methylation that is suspected for the X chromosome inactivation that happens in, in females. This is an ex example here only studying the CPG sites located in imprinted regions. And as you know, this is monoallelic expression, uh, parental determined monoallelic expression that relates to DNA methylation. And you can see that this, in this case, uh, also 50% of sites are hemimethylated, some of them fully methylated, some of them unmethylated in 50% uh, percentage. Not only that, but in, it was very smart to introduce in the, in the array different probes to separate the different genotypes of the mouse, because this is a problem in many labs in the world and in, 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 in pharma and even from, from people that produce mice that and they, all, they have all these problems trying to, to genotype these mice. And here, this genotyping is able to discriminate these four different strains, strains of the mouse very well. You can see here all of them and how they are uh, different here uh, in each uh, cluster, in each group. The same can be observed if we use TSNE, the distribution in these uh, four different clusters here. It's interesting that um, when we go to, to tumors, 
um, tumors, they have a profile that distinguishes each tumor type of DNA methylation. We know that in humans, uh, but there is also a tissue type of methylation uh, signatures. And it's interesting that uh, when we eliminated from the mouse um, DNA methylation array, those CPG sites that are treated with tissue specificity, we still have sites that are specific of cancer type. And these sites of cancer types are able to discriminate all different tumors in, in the mice. And these are different uh, mice, uh, model, different tumors in the mice that we have, and different types. And you're able to see that each one has a particular group. So they cluster very well. So this is a very good discriminator, only used in this case, CPG probes that are not tissue specific. So it's, it, the methylation in cancer goes beyond tissue specific probes. And the same can be observed if we use TSNE here in this site. This is a, a new um, a example. In this case, what uh, we are doing here is uh, analyzing more uh, a huge collection of uh, mouse hematological uh, cell lines from the medical type cell culture collection. And this case is an unsupervised analysis. What you can see here is that there is a very good discrimination of, of these different uh, mouse hematological cell lines according to, to, to the, cell, the cell of origin of these cases. And sure, this is a mix of cell of origin and also cancer-specific methylation in, in each uh, type of mouse malignancy. And this is something that we're studying in the lab. In fact, if we go a little bit more in detail, uh, you can see this is our PCA and TCNA uh, representations of, of this data. You see all the all the clusters of the different uh, hematological malignancies, leukemia, lymphoma, etc., that we have. And we are realizing that there is a, one very different type of hematological malignancy in the mouse, at least, that is multiple myeloma, that behaves in a very different way, always clustered very different in, in all our size. This is the same when we use um, unsupervised hierarchical methylation analysis. In this case, you see that multiple myeloma, they have this particular profile that really isolates from the other cases that you can see using the naked eye in this case. Here, you can see not only different hematological uh, cell uh, malignancies, but you can see also very good classification by cell types and a very good discrimination between T cells and B cells. If we use a semi-unsupervised hierarchical methylation analysis, in this case, not showing random CPG sites like in the previous presentation, but show, only showing what the one top 1% one, one, 1 most variable props, you see very similar data, very good discrimination and isolation uh, between the different cell types. You can see here the uh, comparison between B cells and T cells, for example, they have these profiles, so they are different. But you can see also the different types of hematological malignancies in the mouse that get very well um, isolated. And again, here, this exchange, uh, interesting uh, observation, the multiple myeloma has its own story. It's really, it's really always giving uh, something that has particular features that are unique from this uh, particular type of mouse hematological malignancy. We can use the array, the mouse array, just to quantify CPG content using the beta values average and, and adding beta values there. And these are the different content and by cell type. But again, we, if we count leukemia, lymphoma uh, samples in the mouse, there is one uh, um, outlier that is multiple myeloma that behaves in really in a, in a different manner. So maybe there's something special about the epigenome in this uh, tumor type. Using a limb analysis, just to discriminate different differential CPG sites in the different um, types of malignancy, we have uh, again recreated uh, the heat map um, of these uh, hematological malignancies, and again, able to separate very well the different tumor types with this unique composition, again, of multiple myeloma. And it's something that uh, is really worth to mention, and it's, I would say it's worth to further investigation uh, in the lab. Uh, I would like to, to briefly discuss this beyond, uh, hematological, beyond the description of the array and beyond our work in hematological malignancies. We have also a long-standing tradition in 
in the study of colorectal cancer for DNA methylation. And this is just a few examples in, from my lab in the last years where we have an, uh, analyzed um, different colorectal type tumors and the different prognostic factors, et cetera, and response to drugs in these uh, in these tumors using just uh, DNA methylation microarrays. And these are different examples of publications in that area. So in this regard, we have engaged in a, now in a, in a project that it's funded by Cancer Research UK, the Italian Foundation, the Spanish Foundation Against Cancer. We have studied a lot of uh, colorectal cancer mouse models with different composition of genetic mutations. And this is work that is coordinated by Owen Samson in, in UK. For example, in this case, we have tumors that you have, they have a BRAF mutation or a TGF beta R mutation, a P53 mutation, APC, or they have an MLH1 defect, etc., uh, etc. Et and the idea here, here is to see if there are profiles of DNA methylation associated with the different genotypes of these tumors. So we have applied in these cases the described uh, mouse DNA methylation microarray, and these are some of the data. Uh, this is putting together all the models that we have studied in the lab. You can see that each model has its peculiarities, uh, looking at the DNA methylone profiles, although some are much closer than others. But each one, at least, they have a few CPG sites that are able to distinguish. And this shows really the power of DNA methylation to distinguish subtypes of a given tumor. If we go in detail asking for particular questions in this setting, uh, one question is um, how different is uh, the sample that we receive from a primary uh, mouse cancer from a, an organoid mouse uh, cancer model? And you can see that there are some sites that they have some difference there, but they are pretty much, I will say, okay, there is this straight lines that uh, pretty much show that they have a similar context of DNA methylation between uh, the cultural and non culture samples at, at this level of, of the organoids. Although there are some difference. And you can see here, in fact, this is the, the this representation by PCA here, but you look at the heat map and you compare uh, colorectal cancer organoids and tissues from the mouse, you see that many of these uh, organoids, they really get mixed up with the tissues. So I think that uh, organoids, they reproduce pretty well the profiles of DNA methylation of, of of primary samples in mouse. So it can be a very useful research tool. Another different question is um, how uh, in, co in mouse colorectal tumors, the, the existence or not of a mismatch repair defect affects the profiles downstream of DNA methylation. And this is a question that has been around for, for, for many years. It's, this has never been a clear answer. And looking at, the, at this mouse, you can see that there is a different profile of DNA methylation if we compare uh, deficient uh, mismatch repair tumors versus proficient mismatch repair tumors. It's clear that there are important differences there. If we uh, go in asking a different question, once it's clear that they behave a little bit different, MSI positive and MSI negative in this context of mouse, another question in the clinics is how different are colorectal tumors from the left side from the, to the right side? One is more methylated than the other or not? And you can see clearly that at least they have differential DNA methylation in, in the mouse. These are different mouse cancer models from the left and right colon. And you can see, you can see that they have already evident uh, difference in the, in the profiles obtained uh, in the PCA um, representation. Thinking about um, similar questions in colorectal cancer, additional question that has been um, provided by, by our collaborators in this area. Uh, is one question is that in the field is those tumors with MSI and colorectal cancer, uh, they are more methylated or less than uh, proficient tumors. So in fact, uh, comparing uh, those deficient with those with mismatch, only identify around 12% differential methylated sites in the mouse. And a lot of these are hypermethylated, but you have a very similar number of hypomethylated. So what looks to, to us that happened in MSI is that there is a global aberration of DNA methylation profiles, gaining methylation in many sites, but also losing methylation in others. You can see the location, it's, it's everywhere, of course, but there is a predominance of body because body also, it's um, are props that are overrepresented in the microarray. 
another question will be is this uh, the right side more methylated than the left side this is a question that um, people has been asking around and it can be uh, associated with a higher exposure to carcinogens and studying right versus left 25 20 percent of cpg sites that they are different and these sites are not in our hands that hypermethylated they have aberrant methylation and the same had happened in the microsatellite instability cases some of them were hypermethylated 40 percent but close to 60 percent were hypomethylated of course this hypomethylation here is happening many times in this uh, body of the genes and these uh, intergenic regions in body and open sea here. These are regions that are represented there. But keep in mind that most CPG islands in a normal tissue, they are already unmethylated, hypomethylated, so they cannot get further hypomethylated. So this that's the reason uh, in part also why we are seeing hypomethylation in, in body and open sea in, in these cases and unless in, in promoters. Uh, a similar question to the ones uh, I, I gave like an example is, there are particular mutations conferring profiles of DNA methylation in the mouse colorectal tumors. And the, our results show yes, but not that many, not that many changes in DNA methylation. For example, this is a model that we have this mouse, particular model that has these mutations and has a, a mismatch uh, defect in this case. And in one case, there is no BRAF mutation. And in the other model, we add a BRAF mutation. Uh, what happened here? That there is a difference in DNA methylation, but very few sites. Only 6% of the sites are different between this model and this model. Okay, And a lot of them are hypomethylated, as suspected, uh, body of the genes, open sea regions. So very few sites. What happened if we do the same, adding the TGF beta receptor mutation? This again, the, the original mother, the, the deficiency of MLH1, and adding now uh, 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 this uh, TGF beta mutation. And you can see here, even less, around 3% of CPC sites are different with and without the mutation. In this case, there were a little bit more hypermethylation. So maybe there's something more specific here, something that maybe we can look at uh, in, in greater detail. I would like to, to go at, at the end of, of the lecture a, a little bit more in, in detail um, about this story uh, that how mouse uh, cancer models using DNA methylation uh, array, now we can test if they are good to mimic the human disease. So it is clear these are uh, human mouse tumors, primaries in this case, from different uh, knock-in, knock-out, and carcinogenic models, and you see this very good distribution. Okay, these are all CPGs, not only CPGs that are tumor type specific, they also in this case they include tissue-specific probes. You see this very good separation in these different clusters according to tumor type in the TCNA approach. But here, one of the critical questions in, in oncology is how well the mouse models of cancer reproduce the human situation. And this is a critical question because even if in, in preclinical design, a lot of drugs fail because at the end, the mouse models, not all of them reflect very well the human context. And this is a big caveat right now. So what we did now is a, a comparison of our samples with human samples. So in this case, using two different bioinformatic approaches, alignment and leftover, we put our DNA methylation samples um, in with human samples, human and mouse samples together. And you can see that these are here, these are our uh, mouse models of breast cancer, and you can see that they are within particular subtypes of breast tumors, depends on the alignment or liftover approach that you have. And for example, in this case, we have in mouse different models of breast cancer, like the one with um, defect in BRC1, polyomavirus, uh, MTB, uh, the NMTB, neo oncogene model, etc. But you can see that that these models in, they reflect some groups, subgroups, I would say, of human breast tumors. And the same is true for lung cancer. So you can see here, these are the mouse lung cancer tumors, primaries, and the rest in blue are the human lung tumors. Um, you can see that 
a lot all of them cluster together. So still mouse is very strong. The mouse uh, background there is very strong, but they fit within some subclasses of human uh, uh, primary tumors. Uh, in this case, uh, our mouse samples, they, they have different types of QRAS mutations and the addition of defects in the tumor suppressor genes, P53 uh, or LKB1. And this can be very relevant. For example, now that uh, last year has been approved inhibitors of KRAS, um, it will be nice to test how these models in mouse, they are really can be useful to try to develop new inhibitors with, against the particular uh, KRAS mutations in, in lung tumors. If we're able to show that they re reproduce the human disorder, then there will, will be um, better tools for development of these new um, drugs. Although I know that um, this is a cancer research uh, presentation, I could not resist to show this slide because we're thinking about applications in cancer, but the applications of, of this uh, DNA methylation mouse array are going to be huge. It has been provided some examples before um, by Dr. Lipka in hematopoiesis, but Dr. Joe in aging, but what about in neuroscience? Uh, I think there's going to be a huge application there because the brain is a tissue very difficult to access in human samples. And there are a lot of mouse models out there trying to reproduce the human disease. How good are those models? It's something that we don't know. And this is a first approach that we did in the lab. In this case, uh, uh, taking uh, three, di five different regions of the brain of the mouse, cerebellum, hippocampus, hypothalamus, an olfactory bulb, and the thalamus, and you can see these exquisite different profiles of DNA methylation according to each region. And here, the, the most different was, again, cerebellum. And cerebellum is, is also, according to the anatomics and the histology, really the most different region here in this brain. So this really reflects very well. So the next step now is studying all these equivalent diseases there, Alzheimer is affecting this particular, some of these particular regions, and to see how this mimic the data uh, in humans. So I think this is a great field for um, a great field of development also for the mouse DNA methylation microarray. I would like to finish here. I would like to thank all the members of my group and all the agencies that are supporting research in my lab. Thank you very much.